certain here that money doesn't bring happiness. That's true. Money doesn't. Technology does. And let me explain what I mean by that. Most of us believe that we are going to be happy when we buy a house, get a raise, or get married. I personally grew up believing that I'm going to be happy when the time is right. And I was working really hard since I was a kid to achieve my future happiness. I graduated from an Ivy League school. I landed my dream job. I was even living in my favorite city in a beautiful apartment, but still, I was not feeling happy. And instead of feeling satisfied and full of confidence, I was feeling more like this. At this point that I was feeling depressed almost, I decided to make a change and search for an answer to one of life's ever-ending questions. How can we be happy? To answer this question, we need to turn to the field of positive psychology. But before doing that, I asked my five-year-old nephew, and his answer was, because it feels nice, you stupid. And although, of course, this is a very important aspect of it, we need to understand the benefits of happiness in our lives. To do that, I have a few facts for you, a few happiness facts, that will help you understand the other benefits of happiness in our lives. So happiness fact number one, happiness will make you live longer. According to Professor Pressman and Cohen from Carnegie Mellon University, people with higher levels of positive affect had better current and future health prospects. Healthier individuals have better immune function and lower levels of cardiovascular disease. There is even evidence that happier individuals live up to 10 years longer than their less happy peers. But there is even more to happiness than living longer. Let's take a look at happiness fact number two. Happiness will give you a raise. In 2005, professor of University of California, Riverside, Lyubomirsky, and her colleagues documented the effects, the positive effects of happiness and positive emotions to personal and professional life. According to this study, it turns out that happiness fuels success, not the other way around. So technically, if you get a raise, it will not make you happier. But if you are happy already, more money will come your way as a side benefit. At the same time, extensive research shows that corporations with happier employees are more productive, successful, and much more profitable. Happiness fact number three. Happiness is good for your family and society. And to prove that, we need to check that happy people are more likely to attract a mate, enjoy longer and more satisfying marriages, and be even better parents. According to Lawless and Lucas, and a study that they performed in 2011, places with higher life satisfaction were associated with greater life expectancy and lower levels of mortality from heart disease, uh, diabetes, and obesity. So the benefits from the individual, it seems that extrapolate to the family, the community, and the society. There is no question, based on those facts, that happiness has tremendous effects and benefits, both for the individual and their families, but also for the society in general. Based on that, since uh, the benefits of happiness uh, are so, so great. The next question is, what do we need to do to become happier? And there are many schools of thought to help us answer this particular question. One of them says that when I'm sad, I just stop being sad and be awesome again. And that works really well for Barnes Stinson uh, from How I Met Your Mother. I don't know if you watched the, the series. But for the rest of us, it doesn't seem to work. However, 
positive psychology has developed a more structured path to help us come closer to happiness. And the first step towards that path is the development of emotional awareness. Emotional intelligence overall is key to living a happier and more fulfilling life. According to where the World Health Organization, negative emotions and stress affect both our psychological and physiological health. Those negative feelings and stress not only cause 25% of the population to feel under anxiety and depression, but also are factors leading to heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. So, the next, the first step is emotional awareness. Recognizing the stress triggers and what affects our mood is so important. The second and most important step is the development of positive emotional habits that will help us come closer to happiness. As Aristotle said 2,500 years ago, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then, and if you allow me the disambiguation, happiness is not an act, but a habit. Actions and habits affect the most our well-being and happiness. Even simple actions, like performing acts of kindness or expressing gratitude, can help us feel measurably better. Recognizing those actions and reinforcing them, while at the same time changing the actions that help us, that, that make us feel bad, instead of fixating over ideal circumstances, is the key to boost our happiness. So, if the benefits of happiness are indisputable, we should want to know how happy we are, right? According to Peter Drucker, we can't manage what we don't measure. But can we even measure happiness? Is this even possible? The answer is yes. And according to scientists that have run numerous studies, happiness can be systematically measured. And at the same time, in major universities like MIT, scientists have developed technologies and techniques that make possible the measurement of the underlying indicators of happiness, human emotions. To better understand how this is even possible, we need to turn to the field of affective computing that brings together those two seemingly opposite worlds, technology and emotions. Affective computing studies and develops systems and technologies that are able to understand, recognize, and process human effect. Its research combines computer science with psychology, neuroscience, and cognitive science. And based on that research, there are three major techniques that technology can recognize human emotions. The first one is speech recognition. How many times someone has called you from miles away and through the phone, only by the changes in their tone and their voice, you were able to recognize how they felt. In the exact same way, advanced algorithms are able to recognize those changes in the voice and the tone of the person in order to recognize a variety of human emotions. Another way that technology can understand how we feel is through the analysis of facial and body gestures. This is the way that we use in our society to recognize if someone is happy or not. For example, when we're smiling, it's, it means that we're happy. In exactly the same way, those algorithms are able to analyze digital images and videos and recognize, again, a variety of human emotions. Finally, another technique that affective computing is using to measure human emotions is the monitoring of physiological signals. You probably have noticed how you sweat when you become stressed, or how your heart is pounding harder and faster when you are angry. All those are indicators from your autonomic nervous system that is telling you that an emotional stimuli just happened. 
Advanced algorithms are able to pick up those indicators, analyze them through the use of machine learning and pattern recognition techniques, and categorize them into a series of human emotions. Especially with the growth of wearable technologies, this is a technique that is evolving very fast. But it's not going to be the first time that humans were using technology to measure and communicate their mood. The mood rings of the 70s are the predecessors of the emotion recognition wearables of tomorrow. Although those mood rings never really measured mood, their huge commercial success proves only one thing. The intense desire of humankind to measure and communicate our emotions. Now, with the increasing accuracy of effective computing technologies, along with the penetration of mobile and wearable technologies into our daily lives, it's not going to be too long before we have in our hands commercial products that are able to measure and communicate our emotions throughout the day. How would that look like? To better understand that, we need to take an example. And let's meet Anna. Anna is 30 years old, and she's an accountant in a big corporation in San Francisco. So let's walk through one of her days in the present and in the future in an emotional aware world. So Anna wakes up in the morning rather lethargic because she rarely sleeps enough, as most of us. And then dresses up, eats breakfast very quickly, and drives to work through traffic. By the time she arrives at work, she's already tired and exhausted because of the traffic and all the situations that happened before. After that, she has another 10 to 12 hours of work to do and stressful meetings. At that time, after those 10 to 12 hours, she realizes that another day just passed, another day that she has been disconnected from the people that matter the most in her life, her family and friends, but most importantly, herself. Now let's travel into the future and walk through one of the days, the ideal day of Anna in an emotional wear world. Let's assume for convenience purposes that Anna is wearing a wearable wristband that is able to measure her emotions throughout the day and communicate those emotions to every piece of technology around her. Anna wakes up, and her wearable recognizes that she is lethargic, so puts on the right piece of music that will help her start her day on a positive foot and boost her mood. Later on, while she is driving, the traffic is terrible, and the wearable recognizes that Anna starts becoming angry. At that time, it suggests a deep breathing exercise for Anna to help her relax. So Anna takes a deep breath and calms down instantly. By the time she arrives at the office, she's not exhausted. She's feeling happy and fueled with energy. And at that time, she decides to share her emotion with her mother that is far away. Later on in the day, although this day goes pretty well, Anna has a, a very important meeting with the most important client of the company. And she has worked really hard for this project. What happens if something goes wrong? The wearable recognizes that Anna starts becoming stressed and suggests a fast meditation exercise for her. So Anna closes her eyes and listens to the meditation exercise. Just after a few minutes, she has relaxed and she's fueled with confidence to go into her meeting, which goes great. After the meeting, she checks her application, her emotional journal application, to better understand how she felt throughout the day. In this example, we show that Anna benefited a lot, in a lot of ways, from emotional recognition technologies. And all of us can. Those technologies can help us better connect with our inner selves and understand our emotions, develop emotional awareness and positive emotional habits. Those technologies can help us better connect with the people that matter the most 
and share each and every emotion of our day with, with them. And of course, those technologies can make us part of an emotion-aware world where every piece of technology around us can be personalized based on our mood. And it's not only our applications that can be personalized on our mood, but imagine the progress that medical researchers could do if they had access to this data and how they would be able to diagnose mental health illness early enough. All of this are going to be within our grasp in a few years. Achieving happiness is one of the most important issues that humankind has been struggling with for thousands of years. Since antiquity, happiness has been a major purpose of life on which ancient and modern philosophers and scientists, as well as psychologists, have spent their life works on without finding a clear answer. Of course, I'm not suggesting by any means that technology alone can make us happy. However, the field of positive psychology has developed a more structured path to help us achieve happiness and well-being. What if technology could be the tool in that process to help us develop emotional awareness and positive emotional habits as a pathway to happiness? One way or another, effective computing technologies will present an opportunity to help us better connect with our inner self, our loved ones, and the world with new ways that we have never imagined before. Let's embark on this adventure and enjoy the journey to the pursuit of happiness. Thank you.